All right, hello again to everyone who may be watching this video. Uh, today I'm going to be doing another deck profile, this time on the Wild Veggie deck that you're going to see here. Um, of course, uh, one thing different is I'm recording this using the Cockatrice program. So uh, if you guys like the sort of layout or the, the way that this looks and the presentation a little bit better, uh, let me know. I would like to hear some feedback on that. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in using the Cockatrice program, it's uh, something used for playing Magic on, but someone out there made a card pack that lets you use all the Kaijudo cards too that you can download. And I'll probably link in the description the video that I believe Stents the Boss made for the Rangers Dojo channel that details how to get this all set up. So if you're interested, um, check that out. Uh, that said, uh, before I get into the deck itself, I just want to point out that... Uh, this list is going to be very similar and kind of inspired by uh, the list that LED, um, who is a member of the Rangers Dojo Discord, uh, it's a list that he uses when he was playing Veggies. And I, I played against him in a few matches, and I really liked the, how his deck was constructed from what I saw. Um, so when I kind of rebuilt my Veggie list on the Cockatrice program, I built it a lot more in the vein of how he had built his. Um, Veggies was a deck that I had built and had lying around over the years, but uh, my list was pretty unrefined and a lot less uh, streamlined than this version. One of the big omissions I made was just not playing Finbar because Finbar tended to be, the, my copies of Finbar tended to be in some of the other decks that I had been playing and I just didn't bother to put any in the Veggie deck itself. And it's one of the big it, uh, the big additions to this deck that really gives it some, gives it the power that it, it needs. Uh, my version tended to be a lot more like heavy focused on just like a bunch of veggies, a bunch more of these fast attack cards, and then a bunch of just defensive shield blasts. It was kind of just not a super in-depth construction of the deck. And I think this version is a lot more refined, a lot more effective. Uh, so big shout outs to LED for that. Um, going into, uh, yeah, he did a lot of the work in sort of refining this deck for me, I guess. Um, so yeah, but going into my list in specific, I guess uh, we can start with the the two drops. So one of the big things to note here is how many two drops are playing. Twelve is a very high number, and uh, when you look at them, the two that you really want to look to cast in the early game are Renegade and Pesky Pineapple. Um, the fact that they can, when they die and they go to mana, is a really big piece of what makes this deck really function super well. Um, one of the ways some decks might try to fight you is by grinding out your your resources and trying to put you on as few cards as possible. And maybe they're casting things like Bone Blades or Snake Trap or maybe different shades of red removal or even just kind of creature effects like Screeching Scare Adorable. Um, things along those lines. Uh, Ripper Reapers, that kind of stuff. And it makes it... This deck ends up being very strong against those kind of mid rangey decks because cards like Renegade and Pineapple make it very difficult for your opponent to actually take you off of resources because you're never actually going down a card. Sure, you lose the mana that you kind of invested into these creatures and you lose your board position, but you're always gaining back a resource in a mana card. And that can be really important when you're trying to play towards these big effects like Cornucopia, Fimbar, and Swift Regeneration. So it, it makes it really tough to actually grind this deck down on resources. So that's a big uh, piece of the deck that, that, that these cards are very important for filling that role. Um, of course, they're also just corrupted in veggies that really trigger the bad apple, which is one of the other big pieces of the, of the deck. Uh, con continuing with the two drops, Duke Durian is less of a card you want to cast in the early game, with the exception of some of the aggressive matchups, like any of the rush decks, like Magor's decks in particular, um, Blaze Belcher decks, those kinds of decks this card can almost function as like an early blocker where a lot of the time you're going to be racing those decks and duke durian being this card that kind of takes them off of an attack it can be really important to buy you a little bit more time while also and to maybe untap and go over the top of them so it's just a solid kind of defensive tool and where it really comes up is when you're looking at into the later stages of the game where it gives you a layer of defense especially in combination with swift regeneration um, Swift Regeneration is really important when you look at the must-be-attacked effects of Artichoke, Ninja Pumpkin, and Durian. 
uh, it can make it give you almost this impenetrable wall of defense that your opponent can't really break through, especially when you have multiples. Um, so even something as, as small as playing a, a, a kind of medium level swift regeneration, bringing out a cryon and a durian can be really important. Uh, where it just maybe buy it lets you chip in for a shield, maybe in combination with some other creatures that you have out there already, and then you can untap and play some other big effect like a cornucopia and finbar. And Durian kind of almost guarantee guaranteeing yourself the ability to untap in those situations is uh, really important. So it's just a very strong tool and one of the better veggies. Um, I think the only veggie that's two mana that we're not playing is Rapscallion. And the big problem there is it doesn't actually attack your opponent, which is important when you're looking at triggering kind of the combos with Cornucopia. Um, although that is, Rapscallion is a pretty decent card in its own right. Uh, the final two drop is a card we're really not really looking to cast in the early game, which is Aqua Trickster. Obviously just a two for one, no abilities. Um... Yeah, it's just not doing much. Primarily just going to be water mana to cast some of your better cards like Renegade and Bad Apple. Um, that said, it still fills a role where if you don't, if you draw maybe too much top end or maybe you don't draw enough early creatures, it can still fill a role as another creature to put out in the battle zone to go wide and that can still proc the Bad Apple. So one of the things to note here is we're only playing really the three, three drops of Tricky Turnip. So a lot of the time that means you're going to be casting a 2-drop on 2 and then probably another 2-drop on 3. And you just want to play as many of those as possible because these extra 2-drops are basically functioning as your 3-drops. Um, and that, uh, the fact that we operate on even mana a lot is something I'll touch on more when it comes to the multi sieves but, but yeah, Aqua Trickster can just fill that role as a, as a card that fits the sort of engine. Um, that said, it's also pretty important in the late stages of the game to have all these two drops in your mana zone in combination with the Blitz Commando. It can be a really nice option to have these Swiffer Generations that can put out three fast attack creatures, especially in the situations where you don't have a bad apple. So that can be something to look for and just having the redundancy of two drops, especially the kind of corrupted slash veggie two drops, especially when there aren't that many, there aren't really the three drops that fill those slots. So. Trickster, just a solid card. Um, yeah. Tricky Turnip is, of course, just one of the better, stronger cards in the game of Kaijudo, especially when you're looking at nature cheap creatures. And the fact that it's a veggie just means it's going it to uh, get its spot in the deck. Um, Hexproof kind of goes without saying how important it is against Shield Blast and all that. It kind of almost nearly guarantees your ability to proc with a bad apple, so... Yeah, just a, a strong card, so you're going to play it in the deck. Bad Apple here, uh, no pun intended, or actually pun intended, is pretty much, I would say, the core of the deck. Um, the cornucopia, cornucopia and Swift Regeneration are the really like the power cards that make this deck viable in the manner that it's constructed, right? That's like kind of the reason you're playing all these veggies and all the corrupted stuff. But Bad Apple is the engine piece that really makes it function to the level it does and really makes this deck successful. Um, without this engine piece, these you can maybe still build a deck around it, but it just wouldn't be it would just wouldn't be strong. Um, Bad Apple is just such a, a powerful card. Uh, it kind of gives you that Finbar effect where you can attack with your creatures and then you get back resources from those attacks. And you get to play it on a card that just immediately grants that effect to what's already on the board. Um, the difference though is rather than getting cards in your hand, you're just developing your mana. Which is even more important, getting like the, the the ability to play these big powerful bomb cards like Cornucopia, Finbar, and Regeneration a little bit ahead of schedule. So this is really the card that enables you to play something like Swift Regeneration. And of course, it's a big combo piece as well when you're looking at using Commando and Cornucopia and, and even like Cryon just to build these massive boards. Um, so yeah, just really the the primary engine piece and probably the card you're looking for the most when you're um, looking at your opening hand and you really want to make sure you're not throwing it in the in the mana zone if you don't have to it's just it's just the the most important piece that makes this deck function um, one of the things that can happen to you is this deck can get brick walled when you look at the power level or the power of all these creatures it's fairly low 
So things, if your opponent can uh, curves something like Aqua Strider into Full Metal Lemon, for example, it can be pretty tough to attack through that. But one of the things you can look to do uh, is just um, one of the strengths of these kind of cards like Pineapple and Renegade is especially if you land a bad apple, it's certainly probably just the right play to just throw these into their striders. Because again, sure you lose your board pre presence and the mana you invested into these cards, but you you don't actually go down the card and it lets you get that extra resource off a of bad apple as well. So it's generally probably the right play to just throw one or two of these into their blockers and just develop your mana a bunch so that you can actually try to break through those blockers with the power cards like Cornucopia, Fimbar, and Regeneration. Um, moving on with the creatures, uh, Ninja Pumpkin is just like the best big veggie that you can play to get out of your mana with Cornucopia. And again, it's got that really important uh, must be attack clause that really uh, gives the deck the defense that it gets. Um, so yeah, in, especially when it gets the boost from Cornucopia, it can be really tough to attack, attack this deck. Um, that said, you're not casting it a ton. It's mostly just going in your mana zone, but it can be like a powerful card that it can attack through blockers as well and just be a nice card to curve into Finbar. So it's just a solid card. Um, yeah. Just another playable veggie. Cornucopia is, of course, like the big veggie payoff. It lets you build super wide boards. The fact that you have two of these really powerful sixes um, and both like really high power cards makes it really tough for again those kind of interactive decks to grind you out because even if they can discard and use like mesmerize or other discord effects to take you off of these off of resources it's just one top deck can just completely bury them like if they're if you really punish them for not being able to answer your creatures so if ever you just they leave like an uncontested tricky turnip which is one of the strengths of hexproof or like an uncontested even just something as small as like a pineapple if you can just peel something like a cornucopia off the top and then all of a sudden now you just attack and you summon out a pumpkin it's just leads to these huge swings um same goes for finbar one of the again i omitted this card just because i didn't have any spare ones lying around when i was building veggies and this is like the big addition that pushes this card over the top or this deck over the top where it just gives you another big bomb to play towards with your ramp from bad apple and your these creatures dying uh, being able to set your opponent's board position out some problematic permanence and just really dig through your deck for more power cards, especially Swift Regeneration. It just adds another high impact card to this deck. And uh, yeah, that, that said, we'll continue on with, I guess, the kind of haste package here of creatures that give your stuff fast attack. Uh, we're only playing the four red cards. And these are really just going to be cards you throw down in mana, and they just give you more really powerful options for your Swift Regeneration. Um, it's often kind of difficult to leverage these cards, especially like Steam Tank, in the face of so many cards like Piercing and Rusalka and stuff like that. It's really hard to untap with the Steam Tank, uninteracted with. There are some matchups where it can be really good, and you maybe want to play a little bit more red cards for those matchups, but... For the most part, it's just nice to have them thrown down in mana, and then you like to have the option. They both offer different things. Blitz Commando is insane when you have access to a bad apple as well, either in play or in your mana zone. But it's also just great to work alongside, as I mentioned earlier, the, the cheap corrupted creatures. Um, Steam Tank has a little more uh, versatility, I would say. Obviously, costing 5 with the Swift Regeneration makes it a little bit harder to leverage, but... Uh, it can be really strong, I, I think I talked about as well, with the, the Dirk Duke Durians, just bringing those out, buying you the ability to untap, and then land another big thing like Cornucopia, when you're able to swift do those kind of mid-level Swift Regenerations, and untap and maybe play another one or another big bomb card. It can be um, really strong. So they offer some different different things, but they're both very powerful, and really big tools that you want to draw at least ideally one or or one or ideally both just so you have the opportunity and uh, something I alluded to earlier is how this deck operates at the even mana curve so you're not really feeling the downside as much as maybe some other aggressive curve out decks might when you're looking at how much these multi-sieves negatively negatively impact your curves um, just because 
a lot of the time you're going to be playing a two drop on two and then a two drop on three and then maybe a four drop on four and then on five maybe you play two two drops or maybe a four drop or maybe and, and, or, and then you're looking to play like a six drop so given that you operate so much with even cost cards you can very easily find a way to throw down these mana th these multi sieves in mana on the even numbered turns um, so turn one obviously a great time to throw these down on turn three you can throw down a multi sieve alongside that two drop um, so given that you're not trying to go exactly like two three four five and your deck's not built with that exact curve it makes it uh, you're not necessarily being punished for the multi sieves because it's not compromising your ability to cast spells entirely like certainly it might be better to play like or maybe it would be better for other decks to to play like a more powerful three drop than something like just another duke durian or a pesky pineapple but um that said i mean you can just you can find ways to develop whereas if you're looking like a deck like uh maybe uh bant tempo or like uh mega bugs or something like that they really want to go like um mana pot beetle turn two into turn three sword horn turn four keeper laws of rasalka and then turn five homunculon but if they draw too many multi sieves they might have to skip their turn entirely because i mean usually you can find a way to sequence around it but they might have to really compromise their curve or skip their again skip their turn entirely because they can't they can't cast like how many times is it like where you you're sitting on a five drop in hand and it's one of your last cards and then you top deck a multi sieve and then you have to skip your turn because yeah just you you can't cast the spells or so and you really want to sit on that homunculon so given that you operate on the even curve makes it that much more likely like sure you might be playing a lower impact card on turn three but you're still playing something on turn three which is really important so you don't feel the downside of these multi sieves cards as much so that's something to consider like of course there are kind of general rules you can follow where you're considering um your multi sieve counts like in general you might say like it's bad to go beyond 10 or maybe even like eight or six for certain types of archetypes maybe it's like 12 for other archetypes but you really want to want to look like if you're playing like a control deck with a bunch of cards in it maybe you play like 14 15 right but it's not as easy as just how many cards are in your deck or like how aggressive is your deck you really want to be looking at like what cards you're trying to cast when and maybe going a bit more in depth and really seeing how multi sieves work with your progressions and with the way the deck wants to curve out not necessarily just how many cards are in the deck or like and that that sort of thing it's more specific to how the deck functions is going to be kind of informative of how many multi sieves you should play so a little bit of a tangent there but that it's just something you can think about because it might look like really bad to just be splashing four tapped cards in a deck that wants to be low to the ground aggressive um, but it ends up playing out where that's not necessarily the case um, continuing, we got Sumo Ortochoke here, which is just one of the most powerful shield blasts, especially in nature. Super high upside with this deck, especially when you're looking at um, the blowouts with Swift Regeneration. Having access to these, like there's so many times where you might just get an extra turn for free because you Swift Regeneration, your opponent can't answer their board, so they try to just, they might have to just try to turn the corner and try to kill you that turn rather than answering the board and then Sumar Choke Auto Shields just completely blunts that offense and lets you untap, especially even further untap with an extra body because they can't interact with it. There may be times where you swift regeneration and you put out one of these durians or ninja pumpkins that and you get it tapped and then that's your layer of defense. But then your opponent can just fin bar with Salka, piercing judgment that card away. But if you have a sumo artichoke and shields, they they can't play things at instant speed, so they just can't break through that defense. So Sumo Artichoke is super high upside. Um, even beyond that, um, if you're not getting those super blowout, buy a turn, save a, save the game kind of Artichokes, um, just having the ability to have this Shield Blast Wild Veggie is super strong when you're able to use the, the Wild Veggie tag so well. If they just break an early turn three Artichoke and then you untap and play a Bad Apple, that was just a free body you got to develop, which gets you an extra resource. Now you have a tapped artichoke that defends your other creatures. Or maybe you have followed up with a cornucopia, and now you have this this sumo artichoke that 
brings out like something else like a ninja pumpkin you go wide all of a sudden out of nowhere and you have this giant 5k must be attacked they're just a lot of high upside even when the card might be a little lower value than it would be otherwise um there's just so much upside to the body itself when you're making use of this veggie even though it doesn't work with cornucopia in terms of being brought out of your mana zone it's just so strong in the deck and one of the best additional layers of defense you can play um something else i'll touch on a little later is just when you're looking at like playing obviously this deck doesn't have a ton of defense especially not defensive shield blasts but uh it's just really hard to get that much impact out of just maybe playing a few more shield blasts like they're going to come up sometimes in some games and some like sometimes they're broken in some games and they're relevant some of those times but sumo artichoke is relevant a lot more often and just really worth playing despite a card being a card that you can't really cast um so you get the most kind of bang for your buck out of those three slots when you're playing a shield blast like this um moving on to the big big power card of the deck is swift regeneration um I feel like you, you have to be playing three of this card. It's kind of a clunky eight drop in some respects, and it's going to go in mana maybe a fair amount of the time in the early game, but it's just way too good. It's just the card, the number one card you're looking to draw in the mid to late game. It's the card you're playing towards when you're ramping out stuff with Bad Apple. It just gives you the super strong blowouts in the deck. So you really, really want to be playing, maxing out on this card and finding it as frequently as, as you can. And it's often, you might think like, oh, the first regeneration, if the first regeneration doesn't kill them, you should be trying to play to where the first regeneration kills them, because if you have to use two, then maybe, like, you're you're building the deck wrong, I don't know. There could be arguments, like, where you should be just playing to where the first regeneration kills them, and you shouldn't be building towards the second, but honestly, like, you just, that doesn't really come up, like, um very often you when you're playing three copies you can very kind of almost liberally use the first copy to just again like maybe be, maybe make those defensive plays use one to kind of defensively with endurian and a and uh cryon or maybe just put out like just develop out like a cornucopia or a bad apple or something and then you can follow it up with another one which would be just which is just insane or you can just it just you can use the first one a little more liberally when you're not banking on your one swift regeneration that you're going to have access to to win the game because you have access to some more when you're playing more copies um but yeah it's just the highest upside i touched on a lot of the combos so far um like the blitz commando plus two corrupteds um duke durian plus steam tank obviously just even bringing out a cornucopia when you already have a bad apple can be good um or like if you untap with a, a cornucopia and then you land a swift regeneration into and bring out like one of these fast attacks or like bring out bad apple commando steam tank there's so many combinations with the card and there's a lot of effective ways to use it even just bringing out something like a finbar setting your opponent's position back and trying to dig for a few extra cards um it just got so many things going for it the card's really powerful and what you really need to make this card work and function is exactly what this deck offers you want a lot of cheap things you want some nice fast attack combos and you want um a way to generate enough mana to actually be able to play the card and that's what bad apple and these early creatures do um so yeah just a super super powerful card and one of the big defensive tools as well for this deck like in the in the aggressive matchups where you're trying to race just being able to get up in mana to play a swift regeneration is uh one of the ways you can win those matchups so if you open a bad apple it's just super important for the those aggressive racing matchups um the last card here, Sprite's Gift. This is sort of a speculative card that uh, I view these three slots as the primary kind of flex slots of the deck. And right now I'm just testing this card out to see how I like it. Um, you could, I think, consider maybe one or two, maybe even some some number of these Aqua Tricksters could be flex slots as well for maybe some more powerful stuff. But uh, I can talk a little bit more later about what might go in those flex slots. But Sprite's Gift is the card I'm playing right now, and I think it's doing its job fairly well. Um, the reason I'm playing this card is, again, kind of going into these high power cards, this package of Cornucopia, Fimbar, and Swift Regeneration. Um, when you're playing so many anemic cards, um, cards with low power, you really need these power plays to push over the top. And 
Sprite's gift just gives you a little more access to those cards. Again, like a fair amount of the time, you're going to have to put one into the mana zone. Maybe your opponent can answer the second one you play, or maybe you just can't find the second one. Um, but you're developing your mana. Even if you maybe don't see one of these cards, you're just digging through your deck with something like a Bad Apple, developing your mana a lot with these early creatures and Bad Apple. Um, you can really use make use of Sprite's gift to find those power cards a little more frequently. Um, like very commonly, you, you have to throw down a Swift Regeneration early. It just gives you access to, now you, all of a sudden you have like five cards that you can draw into that would be that blowout Swift Regeneration. So it just makes it a little more likely that you can use, like um, you can play towards those big power cards. Um, when you look at Sprite's Gift as a card, uh, the downside is really like it's it's a minus one for sure. Um, you're you're spending a mana to um, to not generate an extra resource for you, not draw a card, but you're just shifting one resource to a different different place. You're taking a card out of your mana zone and putting it in, into your hand. Um, and that's especially true in the early game where all your mana is super, super relevant and is almost it's very bad or really uncastable when you you can't really afford to slow down your development in terms of mana. But uh, what the, the strength of the card is in the late game when you have a lot of extra mana or even the mid game when you have some extra mana, which this deck can generate with, again, the Bad Apple, the Pineapple, and the Renegade. Uh, when you have that extra mana, it it's virtually not going to be that minus one anymore because those extra spare mana aren't really functioning as resources anymore because they're not really doing anything for you. So in that respect, Sprite's Gift becomes like a one for one and you're not setting back your tempo. So it's just a really strong late game card. Um, and it's almost akin to something like a Crystal Memory, but for one mana where you have so many cards or a, a bunch of different options in your mana zone, Sprite's Gift effectively gives you this one card tutor that lets you get a bunch of different options. Um, whether it be like a, a fin bar to bounce your opponent's stuff, maybe a cornucopia to go wide, or especially like the Swiffer generation to just go blow out, to just completely go for a blowout. Uh, it just gives you a lot of versatility um, in terms of, and it gives you some options for cards to play towards. Uh, and, and it's just a powerful late game card. Um, you could make an argument like rather than play this slot for a, another card that's good in the late game maybe just play a better card for the mid mid game that helps you make sure like these big power cards just go through and beat your opponent the first time so that you don't really need the second one i could see an argument for that like it's just it doesn't really do anything in the early game um but yeah i i don't know i, I i've kind of liked the card for its purpose so far and it's actually been pretty strong I, I like the card um i'm not for sure if it's going to stay in the deck going forward but it's certainly a, a card worth considering uh some of the other options i think the big omission i'm i'm making is uh choten's lieutenant here uh i played a bit with the card i wasn't super impressed um it kind of i mean i think the main the, the couple main reasons to play it are one it kind of gives you another card akin to bad apple but a lot worse where you get this kind of mid-game card that lets you sort of bridge the gap up into these big powerful plays it doesn't actually generate the extra mana that lets you cast these cards earlier but it can maybe generate some extra cards so that you can hit those land drops into the six mana while you're curving out um, so that can be a, an important thing that seneschal does um, the problem is it only really procs off of these six creatures unless you already have the bad apple, um, which is kind of, I mean, you're just going to follow up the bad apple with the Senate all the majority of the time in those cases. And then, I don't know, it just, while you're playing with the card, it doesn't kind of work out as well as you would like it to. Um, even its ability to stop interactive spells like bone blades and piercing and uh, snake trap and whatever else you can think of. Um, even stopping those cards, it's not super relevant when you're playing a lot of stuff like Renegade and Pineapple where you don't really mind them spending the removal on those cards. And even further, like you're not, again, you're probably not going to be curving or you're, you're going to be playing the Bad Apple first and then following it up with the Sanishal, if anything. And it just makes it 
a little awkward where their removal can already hit this bad apple if they have it. I don't know. It just, in my experience, it hasn't played out super well. But that said, it's a water mana. And one of the other big strengths of it is as an option when you're playing your Swift Regenerations. Um, having access to this card alongside like a Blitz Commando when you play Swift Regeneration um, can actually be pretty, pretty important. And the big reason is that can stop like one of the big defensive shield blasts that can kind of stop this deck's combos, which would be Piercing Judgment. Um, of course, it doesn't stop like uh, Storm Spark or Arbiter, but nothing really would. So uh, Seneschal stopping Piercing can be a big deal because um, one of the big ways your opponent might be able to come back from your big swift regeneration push is when you're sitting on just one of these defensive cards like ninja pumpkin or duke durian they can just piercing um maybe tap an attacker bounce something and probably are bounce like the pumpkin or the durian itself or even untap and play like their piercing judgment to bounce those cards and then um they can try to game you when you lose that defensive card so seneschal protecting against piercing judgment i think is one of the one of the the reasons to play the card and one of the reasons that actually comes up is just an option with your swift regeneration um that said like um yeah i mean it also just stops the piercing from being able to maybe stop the the combo like and then you just guarantee the victory because it you they don't have access to piercing to stop the cornucopia so in decks that don't play like storm spark and maybe the arbiter doesn't come down at the relevant time so Seneschal can almost guarantee you the game. But when you're looking at those situations, it's mostly going to be like a Swift Regeneration to complement a board that's already super functional. Like I'm talking boards that already have like access to the Cornucopia and the Bad Apple. And then they're bringing out like uh, Commando and Seneschal. Um, so it's just, I feel like it adds to these really strong positions that you have already to a degree that I think it might not be necessary as opposed to other cards like maybe Sprite's Gift where it might be really good to complement strong positions oh, but it, it's a lot more functional in the late game in general where Seneschal is just kind of an option a nice option to have in your mana zone and and it can be a decent card in the mid game which is another strength and a water mana so those are all things going in its, in its, in its favor I just found that while playing the card, it wasn't offering too much for me, and it wasn't just it just wasn't a relevant card in, a, in enough games for me. Um, that said, like some of the other cards I would I was considering were just I think before I put in the sprites gift, I was just straight up playing these three cards, um, just maxing out on these red creatures. It could make it a little more likely that I can actually cast one, which was actually. It could be can can be relevant sometimes like in certain matchups um if you can just untap with like an early steam tank um you can just kind of blow out your opponent by just landing a cornucopia and just dumping out a bunch of edgies um there are certain matchups where like just being able to cast some of these can actually be relevant um beyond that just guaranteeing you have access to one can also be super important when you're playing six instead of four or even not just guaranteeing you have access to one, but guaranteeing you have like the, or making it much more likely you have the option to choose between either one. It, it just adds a little more to the deck. And 12 multi sieves might be a ton, but when you actually play the deck like that, it, you kind of see the kind of benefit of playing on the even curve where you do find it can hurt you a, a, a bit. Like 12 multis is certainly a lot, but even though if you're kind of splashing six red off color ones, you still find a lot of opportunity to put them put them in mana on those even or sorry odd number turns where you're still able to cast something at the same time. So it's not as big of a detriment to be playing that many multis as it would be in another deck. So I think those are some of the options. I think you could even consider if you're cutting the sprites gifts here, you could even consider putting maybe even two Seneschals in place of one of these Aqua Tricksters. Even though Aqua Trix Trickster is a card that might um that that's one of the few that actually procs like the the seneschal here um it, it might still be something worth looking at just to upgrade this slot to like another strong option for the blitz commando and a decent card 
in the mid game like it, it's a much worse version of kind of bad apple but maybe you you probably do want maybe some number more of cards like bad apple so i could see moving back that direction um the one other place i would look to maybe improve the deck is i think something my brother noted when he was playing it and we were testing some matchups is sort of the lack of defense um of course you have like the artichokes which are super strong and then you have like these kind of must be attacked clauses especially in combination with regeneration but that said while that's like a pretty strong plan against those uh hyper aggressive decks where you can just sort of race them and use these defensive cards much more it, it's much harder for those kind of non-interactive just rush decks to break through these effects um when you're when you're playing against the more interactive um, things like like something like like the more traditional tempo decks where they're able to use things like um, Aqua Chaser and their own fin bars and Piercing Judgments and maybe even like uh, cards like Screeching or Bone Blades or what have you out of like the um, some of the like tempo like Light Water Dark tempo decks or even things like Blinder Beetle Prime when they're playing these like much more um, interactive games those matchups are a lot harder and it might be more important to have some extra defense in the in the form of shield blasts in those matchups where you might not need like these blowout shield blasts versus the rush decks because your defense and your racing capability is pretty strong already that said like the defensive shield blast might certainly help again or would certainly help against those rush decks as well but i i could see an argument for playing some more defensive cards like that but the problem I see is like just just splashing three random shield blasts. Like if it was something like Drill Storm or Rothis or um, Root Traps. If you're just splashing like a, a play set of these random shield blasts. Like sure they might come up as a nice defensive card in some games. They're going to be in your shields. And then some of those some games they're going to be relevant. Uh, I just don't think they contribute enough. Like the upside on Sumo Artichoke is insanely high and just being a creature gives it a lot more flexibility and a lot more power. Whereas just splashing like these kind of, just kind of, they don't, they just don't contribute much when you're just playing a play set of a random set of shield blasts. Like they're just going to be a mana card from a hand that sometimes does something sometimes. Like it just, I, I don't think they contribute enough, enough of the time. Um, that said, if I think what I kind of came to with my thinking on that was if I was to just splash some extra shield blast, it would be Storm Spark Blast. Uh, just because it has the kind of same, if I'm going to be splashing one, I want one that's super high upside. And just like Sumo Artichoke, this kind of have some insanely high highs. And it just gives you the ability, as I, I think I touched on earlier, where you just, all you sometimes you just... All you need is one extra turn to untap and land this big bomby Swift Regeneration. And that's soon Storm Spark Blast can kind of guarantee that untap. So if I was to play just some just to play some play set of extra defensive shield blasts, it would be Storm Spark. Just because I want that if it's in my shields, I want like the ability to have something insanely relevant and something that's just going to blow out my opponent if it's in shields. Um, obviously, Storm Spark might not even do that. Like it has like even some variance when it's in your shields. But again, if I'm splashing a card for that purpose, I want it to be like something that's just going to give me that extra turn for sure and the super high ceiling in that slot. So I think it w if I was to play something, it would be Storm Spark as opposed to just something kind of middling like. Uh, just the random red kind of removal shield blast or whatever else you could think of so that's sort of my thoughts on all that um i'm sure you could think of some other cards to play in as well in those extra slots um i know uh i think led was playing i think his list differed from mine where he was playing i think two seneschal choten's lieutenants and two lava bursts in place of my three sprites gifts and one of these swift regenerations i think the swift regeneration you should for sure be playing three of but um lava burst is a card that's uh just another defensive card that's pretty castable being like a three mana removal spell for seven thousand or less but you have to banish one of your creatures 
So it can be kind of ni a, kind of a nifty card where you can put one of these cards right into mana and get kind of like a ramp spell out of it. And I really like it versus, um, I think, Dragons as an out to Herald. I think that's one of the big reasons to play that card. Um, and, I, and I like that, that, that it offers that removal for Herald. While also even maybe clearing some small creatures out off your board can be maybe good as well. Um, but I just don't think... I just don't think the card's probably worth it playing overall. Um, yeah, it doesn't really like. I'd ra I I really want to look to kind of maximize my engine and like maximize like the the nut draws and what the deck is trying to do. Um, maybe once you kind of establish how powerful the engine is and maybe where you what what's required, it might be worth kind of scaling back on that to play some of those defensive cards. But I don't really think you need to. Uh, with this deck and I think Sprite's Gift so far has offered a fair amount to the engine but again I could see just going back to more Seneschals and more of these red cards for that purpose as well um, so yeah um, that would be kind of a fairly long in-depth discussion or explanation of this veggie deck uh, if you have any questions on the deck or um, any thoughts of your own or maybe some input on to what what you would maybe fill out these slots with or what changes you would make i'd love to hear that that input um i don't have a ton of experience with the deck i've played it a fair bit um not so much in this version like i've played certainly a, a fair amount of matches but nothing that i would no quantity that i would call myself an expert um i'm sure uh led would be a lot more informed than i am but with all that said i i hope you enjoyed this kind of explanation of the, the of the deck and again if you want to kind of build some decks yourself and uh, experiment there I would highly look in, recommend looking into the cockatrice program and, and playing on there it's not the most uh, it's not the most uh, user friendly uh, it has it, it can be a little bit tricky to work with but it, for the most part it's easy enough and I think it's it's worth looking onto if you want to play kaijudo and build some decks and experiment so yeah, I, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, look out for some more in the future. And uh, yeah, and with all that said, uh, enjoy your days or whatever you're up to. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.